Hi guys, Tim here, Spec Technology, last day of 2020. Let's see what 2021 holds. So what I want to do, I want to slow this down just a little bit. A lot of times I just run through these trailers pretty quick. I want to do something a little bit more educational for you guys that are calling and want to see different rigs. Uh, we'll try to make it short. My guess this will probably be a, uh, oh, I don't know, six to ten minute video. Not this one, but once it's all edited and put together, but it's going to be a little more educational. So let's start with a trailer. They call this a coffin nose trailer, a flat nose trailer. You'll see in some of our other videos and additional clips that I'm going to put in here. A lot of times we build a V nose. This trailer is just fine. Uh, for this rig, this is a shore power rig. Traditionally, there's three ways to power a rig. One is shore power. The second way to do it would be a gas generator and a gas compressor. The third way to do it would be a diesel generator back to an electric compressor. So we happen to have this in the shop today. This is considered a shore power rig. And that means we have four gauge, three conductor wire in the back of this rig. We'll get to it, you'll be able to get a peek at it. But what's nice about this very simple rig, we can put an electric compressor. What we have here is a, uh, I think it's a seven and a half horsepower. You'll see it up there on the label. About a 30 CFM compressor. Electric compressor, again, not a gas engine. You're not feeding this thing gas. Uh, your guys aren't carrying gas around, but you have to make sure on every job that you have power or you have to be ready to uh, rent a generator. So once we establish what uh, type of power we wanna use to run this, again, shore power or gas and gas generator compressor or diesel generator back to an electric compressor, um, those are traditionally your three ways to run this rig. So the other thing we have to think about is once this air is processed, once we get power and this air is processed, you'll see here it runs out of the tank and this could be of course a gas compressor, but in this case, because we're shore power and it's, a, it's an electric compressor, you have a couple choices. This is a mechanical water separator. This is about $200. This is the least expensive way to possibly catch water as it's being compressed. If you've not drained the tank, we've got a little ball cock on the bottom that allows you to uh, drain the water out of the tank. This is gonna be the least expensive way to try to catch this water. Couple valves here. You'll come out probably every hour and a half, every couple hours. You're gonna drain that off and uh, try to keep water out of the system. Of course, if you run a pneumatic machine, uh, even an electric machine or a hydraulic machine, you have uh, the machine running on air, you have the drum pumps running on air, and you have the uh, spray gun, which is triggered and purged by air. So again, uh, dry air is very important. If you live in Salt Lake City, Utah, where it's very dry, or you're up in, uh, a very dry environment, this may just do the job for you, $200. Um, so the next step up from that, of course, is a refrigerated air dryer. This is a 50 CFM Scholz air dryer. It's manufactured by a company called Beko, B-E-K-O. And uh, what we do here is we put it on a pre-manufactured stand that stands about $200. This dryer is about $1,150, or let's just say $1,200. So, there's a thousand dollar upgrade right here for this Shoals versus that mechanical water separator. Now the customer initially wanted this and then he changed his mind and he wanted to add the dryer. So we added the dryer to it, no harm, no foul. And we actually just left his water separator up there. Um, so now we've got a little pre-catch and then we've got this uh, refrigerated air dryer, runs off 110, 120 volts. Try not to fall out of the trailer. Um, it is run uh, through the floor. It's got this little hose. And about every, um, I don't know, five, seven, eight minutes, you'll see that it spits water out underneath the trailer. And what this does is this refrigerates the air coming through the system, brings it to dew point, and then spits it out underneath the trailer. So that's a very important component. We try to incorporate this in every single rig that we do. Thank you. 
All right, the other thing that we talk about is hose. This hose, this is our hose. We manufacture this hose. This is 5,700 PSI hose. Uh, it's about $1,450 per 50 feet. It is a flat copper tape wound around the hose inside of there, underneath the insulation. And that wire heats up and that keeps the material uh, nice and warm all the way to the gun. So you have to have a hose. You can put uh, on most of the rigs, the A25, which we sell a lot of, the pneumatic rig, will run up to 210 feet of hose. The E20, electric machine, which we talk about a lot when you call us, will run uh, 210 feet of hose as well. The hydraulic machine that we sell quite a few of, the GH2 2035, will run 310 feet of hose. So you have to have hose. This is 5,700 PSI, like I said. Most everybody else sells 2,000. It's double steel braided. You'll see it's not a very thick hose. It's not super large. I can get my finger and my thumb around it. Um, it weighs about 37 pounds minus the scuff jacket. We have a couple choices of scuff jacket. Um, here we go. We got the compressor kicking on here. I see my uh, partner Jacob's gonna shut that off for me. So Jacob just shut that off in the back. We've got a breaker panel back there I'll show you. Um, as we progress. The other thing I'll show you, this is called a shop built hose rack. Let me get right back up in here. And this uh, is pretty sturdy. Haven't had too many complaints about these. They hold this hose just fine. Uh, we'll put a couple risers on here, a couple pipes I think we have, or we'll get them on there. Today gives us a little bit more catch area. He only has uh, 150 feet of hose on here. And this works fine. You'll see down here we have the gun block. This is the gun block. You'll see this in our train. And now we're going to get down with this. Now watch this. Oh, look at that. Look how much easier that is to use. Woo! You don't have to bend the whole stinking hose. Up and down, back and forth, in and out. It's like a discotheque. Old Studio 54 dancing. All right, there it is. If you do business with us, I have about three and a half hours of training video uh, that we send you, and you can kind of get a jump start on understanding the dynamics and how this whole system goes together. So there's your hose. I'll show you in the next uh, trailer video the uh, more expensive hose rack that we have. I think I charge you uh, 50 bucks for this. Uh, it's nothing major. Um, the next hose rack, I've got an intermediate. That is the hose rack uh, does not have the shelves, which you'll see in uh, a following video or maybe an insert that I'll do here. But uh, that's your hose racks there. Cheap, easy, gets the job done. Of course, we got LED lighting. We try to put that in all the trailers. Um, you'll see our compressors. We put them up on vibration pads. Not everybody does that. They bolt it straight to the floor. Um, but that's how that works out there. This is a 10,400 GVW. It has uh, 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 5,200 pound axles underneath it. 16 foot trailer and like I said um, a lot of times this is a v-nose video we don't get too many of these flat nose videos in here so here's the back end of the shore power rig looks pretty much like the back end of uh, a gas rig or a diesel rig but you'll see here we have a hundred feet of four gauge uh, three conductor again a little shop built rack here trying to keep the price down for this guy um, and what you're going to do, we've, what we've done, we've actually just made a little pigtail here. My guys broke open the power panel here and they hardwired it in there. But you'll come from the four gauge cable, again a shore power rig, we'll go to the breaker panel and that electricity will get distributed to the components. Uh, one line goes to the machine, you'll see we have the machine running here. The other will go to the compressor. They'll have a breaker for the air dryer if you choose to put a refrigerated air dryer in there. And uh, a couple outlets here this time of year, December. A lot of guys are trying to heat their materials. So if they want to put uh, blankets on these or they want to put uh, barrel uh, belts on here, they make uh, barrel drum belts that go around the base of these. And that's important in trying to get your material um, warmed up. Again, here's an A25. 
pneumatic machine. You'll see a ton of these in our videos. We sell quite a few of them. It is a 2000 PSI machine. Um, let's just try to cover the twin brother to this machine or the twin sister would be the E20, which is an electric driven machine. So this is pneumatic. You'll see there's a pneumatic uh, air pump back here, drives those pistons up and down and it creates up to 2000 PSI of pressure. And that'll be your spray pressure that comes off those gauges. An E20, an electric machine, also does 2000 PSI. Like I said, it's a twin brother. It develops its pressure with an electric motor. This develops pressure with a pneumatic motor. The GH2 2035, which we sell quite a few of those, um, is also a 2000 PSI machine, but it's hydraulic. And you'll see that in some of our videos online. So they all develop 2000 PSI. This has 6000 watts of heat. The E20 has 6000 watts of heat. The GH2 has 10,000 watts of heat. And the reason that that heat is important uh, on the larger machine, a lot of our roofers are using the GH2 hydraulic because they're processing a lot more material a lot faster. So the uh, GH2 hydraulic is a good roofing machine. The A25 will probably sell about 65 of these this year. I think I've sold two E20s. Um, and the reason is um, this does not have a motor control board. It is not an electric motor driven machine uh, is one thing. The other reason is uh, as pressure goes up, the E20 tends to lose volume a little bit faster than the A25. Um, the nice thing about the E20 is that I can run a three phase electric uh, gas compressor, a gas generator, three phase gas generator, and I can run a three phase electric compressor because it doesn't demand as much air as let's say this pneumatic machine right here. So the E20 has its advantage there, uh, but the A25 is definitely our favorite machine. Um, you can run this again off of uh, shore power. We can run a single phase gas compressor and a gas, uh, I'm sorry, single phase gas generator and a gas compressor. The only way to go back to an electric compressor is to move up to a diesel generator. So you have three ways to run this shore power, gas and gas, or diesel generator. Uh, electric compressor. E20, you can run the machine shore power, you can run it three phase gas generator uh, and electric compressor, or you can use a diesel generator and still use an electric compressor. E20 is a little bit more flexible as far as how it's powered. So that's that. Every rig needs uh, drum pumps. These are the T3s. We love these pumps, they're very quiet, or at least they're quieter than the old pumps. Kind of uh, same technology as a machine. You got a shuttle valve here, sometimes they call it a pilot valve. That tells the motor when to move up and down. And um, that's about it. Every rig needs uh, a gun, so we have been pairing this with the Graco uh, Fusion PC, the new gun, the Pro Connect. You'll see it right here. And we're using this flush pot. I've got a video on YouTube that has this flush pot being demonstrated. Do one more quick little video, guys. This is a little canister setup that we put together. Uh, I've been doing this for years. It's now in the back of the Graco book. I don't know if it's been back there forever or whatever, but uh, this is it. So we have this little non-aerosol canister. We've put mineral oil in it. We have all the proper adapters on there. We're gonna put about 100 PSI of air in here. So now it's a pressurized vessel. So we have pressure in the canister. We have the gun block that came with your gun on the bottom of the gun. You'll see the gun block down there. We have to put air onto the gun so we can trigger it. We're gonna come over here, find a place to spray this. You have to squeeze the button on the canister. So if he squeezes that now, nothing's gonna happen until he squeezes the trigger on the gun. You have to do it uh, together. So squeeze one, squeeze the other. 
Make sure you got air, and this is what you'll get. That'll purge right out of your gun. It'll flush all the way from the screens all the way to the tip of the gun. And you can leave the gun on there for the week or whatever. Come back and use it the next time. And you'll see a two-man fresh air respirator system here. And it's pretty simple. So hopefully this video helps you, gives you a little bit of a head start of the different types of machines. I'm probably going to edit this thing up a little bit and uh, insert some other rigs and kind of give you just a description of what those are about. Um, but if you have any questions, please call us, either myself, Tim, uh, or Jacob. He's here. He's our uh, number one shop man. He puts all these rigs together, him and Brett. Jacob can help you with any questions that you have. And of course, Teresa, who catches our phone, uh, is kind of our gatekeeper. And she is absolutely, definitely learning uh, the lingo and the terminology and the technology. Feel free to ask her any questions. Um, please call us, 770-274-9888. Or you can email us at info at spectechnologiesllc.com. Look forward to speaking with you. Thank you.